Hello everyone. Welcome back to our channel. Uh, today I want to show you how to make a t-shirt quilt. Uh, there are many ways to make t-shirt quilts. Um, some of them, uh, you take the t-shirts and you cut them all into the same size squares and you put borders around them of fabric and put them together like a regular quilt. Um, these that you see in these pictures have different size borders on the on each of the little logos that come off the shirts um, you can see the different layouts it's it's really a more of an artistic process where you just lay it out like you like it um, the one I want to show you today is does not have borders around the blocks it is all the blocks sewn together right next to each other and I call this a collage type of quilt you can see that in this picture here um, all the blocks are put right next to each other um, you start with the center block and then you work your way out um, adding rows as you go okay the first thing you want to do when you're making a t-shirt quilt uh, the, in the collage style anyway is you want to cut your shirts down to where you're just where you're just working with the logos so in this case right here this is what I generally do I take all my shirts and lay them out flat and I work with a um, rotary cutter and a uh, OmniGrid 15 inch ruler. Um, most uh, logos that are on shirts are not bigger than 15 inches. Um, they're usually somewhere around 14 or less. So uh, I usually try to cut away as much as I can to, it's basically like chiseling. Um, chiseling away. I'm, I'm cutting off the sleeves and I'm cutting off the excess at the bottom and that kind of thing. So this is the ruler I use. It's an OmniGrid 15. You can tell it's been used a lot. Um, and I kind of just center the logo, cut off the sleeves. I leave excess on the sides because um, this is just the first cut. I'm just cutting away what I definitely don't want to use. Um, you can see the University of Texas shirt front up there in the top that one is bigger than 15 inches that's rare but that was a sweatshirt um, so I'll talk about that when we get to putting that one in the quilt um, I'm trying here to make sure that I got see at the top I have two inches there from the logo I want to make sure that I have at least two inches on the bottom as well so when I go to center this logo um, it will it will be properly centered. I, I give myself a lot of extra at the bottom there. Uh, in case I need a piece that's that size, I can, I, the logo doesn't have to be centered. Um, it can be a little high or a little low. So I just leave myself some excess there. And then when I take the t-shirts apart like that, in this case, this is a tie-dye shirt and I really like the color of it and everything. So I just kind of saved the piece the extra piece in case I need to add a piece here or there to make things fit properly um, so I just set that off to the side so here what you see I'm doing is I'm um, sorting my shirt fronts that I've cut um, by color I always do a, a stack of grayish colors um, black you tend to get a lot of black t-shirts um, and white and then a stack of all the other colors, like you see there, the red, and then um, the purple will come up here in a minute. Um, and that's right there, that's denim. Um, that kind of goes in the, in the colors stack. Um, so, and there's a blue one, and so forth. So I'll have a lot of um, I'm just kind of sorting them because I want to make sure when I start putting them together that I don't have a whole bunch of black shirts that I'm putting right next to each other and a whole bunch of white shirts and so forth. So um, with them stacked this way, I can pull a black one and put it next to a white one and then put a blue one and so forth. It just helps me sort them all out and get them organized. And then there I have some little bitty pieces that I use to fill in the gaps. And you'll see that in a minute um, when I fill in some of the gaps. All right. 
So now the important part for making a collage uh, t-shirt quilt, you need to know the width and the height. In this case, I put a W and a T for wide and tall. How wide is it? How tall is it? Okay, and now I have um, the interfacing. I use, in this case, I'm using P44. You can also use um, 101, SF 101. Um, I'm using a non-woven uh, interfacing. You can use anything. You can use woven. Just make sure it's thin and um, that you can iron it on. And I do, I iron it on to the back of all of my pieces before I cut them down. You don't want to cut your squares out and then try to iron on interfacing that's exactly the same size because it will never fit. So iron your interfacing on first. So here you see I have the, the ruler. I told you it was too small for this particular logo. And so I pulled out the big ruler. <laughs> this is the um, Omni Grip ruler. It's a 20 and a half inch, I believe. Um, I'll put a link to it in the description below. But I'm actually cutting this um, this shirt. This is my first block in this quilt. It's going to be my focus block. So I'm making sure it's very square and I'm cutting it uh, where everything's centered. Okay, so then I'm going to write down on my tablet how wide it is and how tall it is. So I left about an inch, I believe, all the way around a border around uh, the logo. Okay, so that's my first block. Now, if you've ever made a log cabin quilt, you'll know this process from that. What I want to do is I want to add a row on the right side of the first block. So I'm trying to find shirts that will go together, that I can sew together in a column and then sew them to the University of Texas block. All right, so I'm trying to sort out what goes together. Okay, there's two white ones, maybe. So I don't really like those all that much together because they're both white um, and they're not going to fit anyway. Let me show you here. Um, okay, so what I'm trying to achieve here is I'm trying to put together two squares, two logos that will fit next to my University of Texas block. So however tall that is, that's how tall I need to make it. Now, the two blocks that I put together have to be roughly the same width or they won't fit together. So the Georgia one is a little too small to go with the one below it there. So I'm, that's what I'm doing here. I'm measuring. So I am decided not to use that one. And then I go back to sorting through and trying to find something to use. Okay, so this is when I start diving into the colors. Okay, so that denim piece is um, is wide enough and it's narrow enough to go on the top of this block here to sew them together. See, like that. Okay, that's how they're going to look. They're going to sew together. All right. So then this is where the math comes in. I need to cut my first block and then I need to figure out how much I need for the second block. And then I'm going to sew them together and then I'm going to sew that column to the University of Texas column to make a bigger block. So I think I think I made this one 15 inches square, so that's my ruler. So I'm measuring 
to make sure I've got an equal distance on each side of the logo and on the top and the bottom. Take your time. It, it You have to be really careful to be accurate here. Okay, so I'm, I know I want it 15 wide, so that's what I'm doing right there. Is I'm, I'm doing the width of this one. This column, it could have been 4 inches wide or 20 inches wide. It just depends on what shirt you want to put together. This one's going to be 15 inches wide. The only part that matters is, the, is how long it is so that it will attach to... The University of Texas block. So it needs to be 18 and a quarter tall. Okay, so this part right here is extremely important. When you're putting these blocks together, the top and the bottom one, when they're sewn together, they need to equal in height 18.25 in my case. So I can't just cut the two blocks. I have to add the seam allowance. So don't forget to add a half an inch to the block for each seam within the block. So in this column, I'm going to have one seam because I have two, two logos I'm putting together. So for that seam, I have to add a half an inch. So instead of 18 and a quarter, I'm trying to get 18 and three quarters. And then when I sew it together, I'm going to take that half an inch away and it will then equal 18 and a quarter. That is the most difficult part of this whole thing, is forgetting to add your seam allowance. And I still do it. Okay, so I sewed the denim one to the white one, and they equaled 18 and a quarter on height. So then I sewed that to the Texas block. Right. So the next thing I want to do is to now measure the new width because we've added the column on there. We have a new width. I want to scratch out the old width and put the new width down. So now my block is 31 by 18 and a quarter. So then you do this same process by adding a row across the top. Right across there. And then once that's attached, then you can add a column on the side and you just keep making it bigger and bigger and bigger. So these aren't very tall, so I could add a narrow row at the top, or I could add larger shirts across the top, larger logos. And just play with it with what the shirts you have. I have not made a single one that's been the same because um, all your shirts are different. You can use t-shirts, you can use uh, sweatshirts to do this. As long as you stabilize them on the back uh, with the interfacing, 
so they don't stretch anymore, then you can use pretty much anything. Let's see, I'm just trying out different looks here. See what I like, what'll fit. And this is where the colors come in too. So you wanna mix it up, put in some color, put in grays. So this is where the little pieces come in. I need just a little bit more on that end down there. So I could put in a small column, possibly. The little pieces are great to save because you never know when you're going to need a little piece to fit in somewhere and you can also add borders to the little piece to make it bigger if you need a, a block in a, a specific size like a six inch block or, or whatever um, you can add so I'm checking to see if that's wide enough and it'll fit right there so that's kind of what it'll look like possibly I think I changed it Okay, so I'm going to set that main piece aside and then I'm going to work with my measurements because I need this to be 31 inches wide. So I'm going to measure the width of this one and the height. And I need to make those two the same height as the first block. So however I sew those together, and then the one on the side. So there, I sewed those together. There we go. And I'm measuring. See how much more I need out of that little strip down there. I've got 26. So I need five inches to get to the 31 but I still want to make sure I put in my seam allowance for, for that one I'm about to attach. So I need a five and a half inch wide strip. And you'll see here that even though I wanted to use this piece, it's not wide enough. So I go back to my stacks and find something that's wide enough. In this case, I decided to turn the word tech sideways. And it was perfect. It was just the right size. Okay. So now, since I changed that uh, piece there, I want to debut that again and make sure I'm going to put it where I want it. Because I could put it on either end at this point. It's the right size. So I could put it there. I could turn it around and face it outwards. Um, but what I think I'm going to do is put it at the other end, like that. I know you can't see that because it's off the camera, but you'll see it in a minute. Okay, so I'm going to flip that over, take it to my machine, and sew that, and then I'm going to sew it all together. Okay, so there it is. And it's the right length, or the right width, sorry. So I'll flip that one over on top of it. I'm going to turn it around and pin it. Unlike regular quilting, none of your seams have to match up or anything like that. What you're going for here is total width and total uh, length, or how tall it is. And you're always making your next row either the same width or the same height as what you as what you have. So now you can see all those blocks are sewn together. Okay, turn it around here in a second. There we go. Okay, you see how it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. 
and there's large shirts and small shirts. Um, I started with that one, sewed those together, and then I put those together, and I sewed the long seam there. So the next thing I'm going to do is, is put one um, again on the side, and then I'm going to put another one at the top, and so forth. If I want it to be a longer quilt, I just keep adding to the top and bottom. Uh -huh. And that's about it. That's how you do it. So and here's a fi the finished top. Once I got finished with it, I'll show you in just a second. I have a picture of that. You can see where I started with the University of Texas logo in the middle, sort of in the middle, and I just kept adding. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you'll join me next time. <laughs>